Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how many shares of stock you need to be able to earn $1,000 in dividends per month, not per year, per month. And because I know this is basically the first question that people ask themselves, I'm also going to tell you how much money you need to have invested to be able to get to that point of earning $1,000 per month and I'm also going to show you the kinds of stocks, the kinds of companies that are really good at paying dividends, consistent dividends and growing them over time because that's actually what's going to really grow your dividend income that's basically passive income. Hey guys, my name is Ricardo Torres and I talk about dividend growth investing and basically mastering your money so you can get more freedom in your life. So if you are new to the Escape into Freedom YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe, make sure to give this video a like and just basically watch my content because I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of value out of those completely for free. So in this video, what I want to talk about is dividends. I love dividends. Dividends are possibly the best form of passive income out there. Passive income is income that you don't have to do any work for at all in order to be able to earn it. I always like to look at it with this analogy. It's a little bit like house elves in the Harry Potter world, like little Dobbies. What you're doing when you buy a stock that pays dividends, it's kind of like having a little Dobby. Now Dobby's going to do a lot of work. It's gonna to go to work for you. It's going to earn you money to pay for your bills, pays for your electricity bill or your gas bill, maybe some of your groceries. But that elf doesn't actually require anything from you. It's kind of in the background. It doesn't have to, to take up a room in your house. You don't have to feed it. It's magical, just like in the Harry Potter world. Well, dividends are basically that. When you buy shares in the stock that pays dividends, that's what you're getting. You own that asset, you own that money producing asset, and that asset is going to do two things. It's going to appreciate in value over time, at least assuming it's, it's a good, productive growing company, which, you know, if, if you've listened to anything that I talk about in this channel, you should be able to invest in those kinds of stocks. Okay. It's going to increase in value, but it's also going to pay you dividends. And if you invest in dividend growth stocks, those dividends will also grow over time. So it's like three different factors that really, really skyrocket that income that you get from elves. I mean dividends. Okay, let's get straight into the meat of the video. You really want to know two things. How many shares of a stock you need to be able to get $1,000 in dividends per month and also more importantly, how much money you actually need to have saved and invested to be able to make that much money. So in order to earn $1,000 in dividends per month, okay, that's a yearly income of $12,000. Now to be able to actually earn those $12,000 in dividends per year, okay, how much money you need to have invested for that to happen really depends on your dividend yield or your overall portfolio dividend yield. Now, if you don't know what dividend yield is, it's what percentage of dividends or dividend income a company pays with relation to its stock price. So let's say a company, let's say Harry Potter Incorporated or whatever imaginary company um, costs $100 per share, right? And that share pays you $3 per year, okay, per year for that one share. That will be a dividend yield of 3%, which is quite a normal dividend yield. It's definitely kind of the sweet spot between a decent enough dividend yield, you know, so you actually earn something a little bit meaty from the start, but also not being too crazy because, you know, there are companies that pay 20% dividend yield. And I can tell you right now, do not invest in those companies. That is not reliable income. And what happens more often than not is that that dividend is going to get cut and you're probably going to lose a lot of money. Okay. So definitely stay kind of below that maybe 5% dividend yield. That is definitely safe territory uh, for companies. Uh, obviously look at my other videos. Uh, you know, I've, I've made videos about how to uh, analyze a dividend growth stock. So make sure to check those videos out. I'm, I'm going to link them up here uh, for you to check out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you several stocks that would really make for really good stocks that would really pay you dividends uh, for the foreseeable future that you can actually use to pay your bills and you know cover all your expenses basically. So one great example of this is Johnson and Johnson. Now at the moment, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, Johnson and Johnson has a dividend yield of 2.5%. 
Now I've seen Johnson & Johnson have a much lower dividend yield and a much higher dividend yield because dividend yield actually depends on the stock price. You see the dividend amount that a company announces is either consistent or it grows every year. And in the case of Johnson & Johnson, they've been growing that dividend every year for 58 years. But for now, imagine you invested all your money into Johnson & Johnson at a 2.5 dividend yield. Now you will need to actually invest $480,000 to be able to get those $12,000 a year in dividends, which when divided by every month would be $1,000 in dividends per month. So $480,000 is a lot of money, obviously. So perhaps you wanna choose a stock that has a slightly higher dividend yield. For example, Coca-Cola company that actually has a dividend yield at the moment of 3.1%, which means that instead of investing $480,000 you could get those $1,000 in dividends per month with just $387,000. It's still a lot of money, but it's almost $100,000 less. So you see how by having a slightly higher dividend yield, you need to invest a lot less in order to get that same dividend income. Now we could also go crazy and find a much higher yielding stock. For example, Altria Corporation, the ticker symbol is MO, okay? I've actually made a detailed dividend stock analysis. You can uh, click here and actually watch it. It's like 20 minutes of goodness, all about Altria stock. Now Altria at the moment has a dividend yield of 8.2%. That is um, definitely the highest dividend yield that this company has had for a very, very, very long time. And like I said earlier in the video, I would normally run away from this kind of companies with such a high dividend yield. But actually in the case of Altria, it's a dividend king. And by the way, all these companies that I've been mentioning in this video are all dividend kings, which means that they have been increasing their dividends consistently and consecutively for over 50 years. There's only 29 of these companies, by the way, in the American stock market. So needless to say, it's, this basically filters out some of the best companies out there. So it's not really like you're buying, you know, just some trashy company that's going to lose you money in the long term. Even though Altria, you know, definitely I wouldn't invest all my money in Altria, but I do own Altria stock in my own portfolio, okay? So obviously I don't consider it to be that crazy of an investment. However, at 8.2% dividend yield, you would actually only need to invest $146,000. Now, that's a lot more manageable. And you know, some of you watching this perhaps, you might have a net worth of that much or, or close to that, to that much basically. So just to think that you can invest that into a stock that will pay you $1,000 in dividends per month, uh, it might actually be very encouraging. However, I wouldn't do that if I was you. You see, what you wanna do is to diversify. You don't wanna put all your eggs in one basket because then you're experiencing too much risk. Imagine if Altria just stopped existing tomorrow, okay? You know, it is a tobacco company, so who knows what's gonna happen in the future. That's why you need to divide your assets into several different stocks. And what you want to do with those stocks is choose both stocks that have a high dividend yield with stocks that have a lower dividend yield, perhaps, you know, 2%, 1.5% even dividend yield. Because what actually happens when you do that, first of all, you're much better diversified. So if anything were to happen to one or two or three of your stocks, you still be okay because the, all the other stocks will make up for that loss. And also you're gonna get high dividend yields, you're gonna get low dividend yields. It's actually gonna kind of average out into you know a really nice and consistent dividend yield. Now, personally, I normally like to look for stocks with a starting dividend yield of 3.5%. That I found is like the perfect sweet spot between stocks that pay you a substantial dividend, but also are able to grow that dividend at also a substantial rate, something like you know 7% per year, so that means that your income actually grows very significantly every year. So a 3.5% dividend yield, okay, assuming your average portfolio has that dividend yield, you would need to invest $343,000, right? It's still a lot of money, but here is the crucial thing that you need to understand, okay? Before you dislike this video and you, you know close this window and say, dividend investing is not for me, I'm gonna look for something different. There is a secret that you know successful dividend investors and just general investors know about dividends and also about passive income. It's not about how much money you have now. Obviously, if you have that much money, it's a lot easier, but it's not about how much money you have now. 
It's actually about compounding and giving it time. Because really, you've got two options if you want to earn $1,000 in dividends per month. Those two options are sort of like in a spectrum, okay? On one side of the spectrum, you have a lot of money, but no time, all right? You need to earn those $1,000 in dividends per month right now. Then obviously, you're going to need a lot of money, like $343,000 uh, invested, at a 3.5 dividend yield, for example. That's one end of the equation. The other end of that very same spectrum is if you have a lot of time and no money at all, okay? You can still get there, but you're going to need a lot of time and you're gonna to have to save money consistently. Now, don't get me wrong, th this part of the spectrum is still very doable for people that have a lot of time. Definitely younger people that start as early as possible because when you start as early as possible, it doesn't actually matter how much money you're starting with. Because even if you started with like, you know, $50,000 or $10,000, that's actually not going to have as much of an impact as you perhaps imagine. What is going to have the biggest impact in that case is how much money you are able to save every month and basically how long you can keep doing that consistently. That's where compound interest really is gonna show you its incredible power. And you're actually going to be able to get to that point where with what you earn in dividends, you can cover pretty much all your bills. And by the way, I've not been very transparent about how much I personally earn in dividends per month, but it's it's quite substantial. So if you want to know how much I earn, what I invested, and, and you know how much I actually earned uh, in the month of December, because that's the most I've ever earned in dividends ever, do let me know in the comments below. Just say, hey, Ricard, please share your dividend income, please tell us more about your portfolio. Because you know, if enough people comment that and I get enough likes in this video, I'm definitely gonna consider kind of, you know, unveiling my portfolio, telling you basically what I'm investing in, what I like about my portfolio, what I don't like about my portfolio, and kind of like how I'm living my life by uh, covering a lot of my expenses just with dividends. So one thing I actually didn't mention earlier in the video, uh, I kind of forgot about it to be honest, but it might be the reason that you're watching this video in the first place. And that is how many shares of a stock you need to be able to earn $1,000 in dividends per month. Well, I'm gonna answer that right now, okay? I'm gonna use the example of Johnson & Johnson that I talked about earlier. Now remember, Johnson & Johnson at the moment has a dividend yield of 2.5%. And the stock price, the latest share price for one share of Johnson & Johnson is around $163. Now, to be able to calculate that, all we're gonna do is divide $480,000 that we would need to be able to earn $12,000 in dividends per year, which means 1,000 per month, at a dividend yield of 2.5%. So we divide 480,000 by $163 that one share costs. That's gonna give us how many shares we actually need in Johnson & Johnson. And the answer is 2,944 approximately. Now, I've got a problem with people focusing on share prices, okay? It's not really a problem, but perhaps it's just misinformation. But I feel like a lot of people focus on the actual share price. How much does one share of a stock cost? And really the answer is that it doesn't really matter, okay? The number of shares that are out there for, for a company, it doesn't really matter. The only time where it matters is if you really need to buy at least one full share of a stock to be able to own it. Now, in the case of something like Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, it's a lot of money. I think like $200,000 or something crazy. I'm gonna show you on the screen how much it costs right now. But obviously, if you cannot buy fractional shares of that stock, that's a problem. And that's where you know the share price of a stock really does matter. But for 99% of stocks, one share is probably gonna be less than two or $300, all right? And if it's not, what companies tend to do is do stock splits, which means that they get how many shares that, that are out there, and they just divide them by, let's say, you know, three or four. Apple did something similar, Tesla also did something similar very recently, and it doesn't really have any impact on the underlying company. The company is not going to be more profitable, it's not going to make more money just because of that. However, it means that for people that cannot buy fractional shares, which you can do in something like Robinhood or I believe M1 Finance as well, 
That means that the threshold at which you can actually enter and own a certain stock is a lot more accessible for a lot of people, okay? So in that situation, the stock price of a share, you know, how much it costs to buy just one share of a stock, there, then it really does matter. But for everything else, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What matters is how much money you have invested there. So, you know, in this video, I've basically shown you that, you know, you basically require a lot of money. And if you don't have that, you need a lot of time, okay? And over the time, save as much as possible. Honestly, even if it's $5 a day, I actually made a video over here about how you can become a millionaire on just $5 a day. But if you can save more than that, then quite realistically, in around 10 years time, you should be able to get there, even if you start with nothing. With 10 years, saving something like $1,000, honestly, I've done this calculation a million times, you should be pretty close to hitting those $1,000 in dividends per month. But of course, it does require time and consistency and letting the magic of company interest do its work, okay? Now guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I really, really do. Let me know uh, what you think about this in your comments. How much, how much are you earning in dividends per month right now, okay? Uh, as always, give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. A lot of work goes into these videos, okay? So I really appreciate all you guys' support. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. And don't forget to remind me if you want me to show my portfolio, okay? Because I really want this video to get, you know, plenty of comments and likes. Otherwise, perhaps I won't show it, okay? We'll see. We'll see what you guys want me to do, all right? Apart from that, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and I will see you next week in next week's video. <laughs> Take care.